Hi, uh, I'm Bryn from ByGender.net. Um, it's been about two weeks since I recorded a video, um, and I wanted to make sure that I um, made a new one so that everyone knew that my surgery went okay. Um, I did get, um, well, this is my brand new nose. Um, I didn't actually go in for um, cosmetic nose surgery, so I think it's still, it's not as bumpy, but um, it's still also a little bit swollen. I think it it might be crooked. I think it goes this way a little bit. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so I wanted to talk a bit today about um, passing. I, really, it's it's about my past weekend, um, but it uh, it put me in mind about um, everyone's focus on passing. So um, my girlfriend and I were going out of town this weekend, and uh, we were going down to St. Louis to um, celebrate. Uh, a couple of our friends opening up their very own coffee shop. Um, it's a sex positive coffee shop, so if you are um, if you are sex positive, if you want to become sex positive, you should go to Shameless Grounds in St. Louis. It's at um, Sydney on Ohio Streets, attached to the Koken Art Factory. Go check them out. They're really awesome people. The coffee shop uh, coffee shop itself is also fantastic. Um, their grand opening is Friday the twenty. I'm sorry, um, Friday, March 4th, I think. That's their official grand opening. Um, and so we went to Naughty Gras that was there at, uh, at Coconut Factory too. And it was really, really cool. Um, so I, uh, on Thursday, before we went down, um, I got my nose cast off, which I didn't even know there was a nose cast, but it's just basically a soft piece of Velcro that they then attach a big plastic tent-shaped piece over that has the other side of the Velcro on it. And it, it sits like this, um, and uh, it's hard plastic, so it doesn't, you know, it takes some of the, the um, abuse that your nose would get. Um, so Thursday, I got that off in the morning, and I had to work. Um, and in the afternoon, um, I decided I was going to treat myself uh, for having survived the surgery and survived the recovery and done all this stuff. And uh, I decided I was going to go hit the local salon um, that I pass by all the time on the way to dropping my kids off at school and picking them up and things. Um, so I thought I'd pop in and see, you know, and take advantage of their services. So I go in and um, get a manicure and a pedicure and a haircut, um, and they were absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, I looked you know much more like this than I do in my my boy mode. Um, and uh, you know, I mean, the only name they had for me was Bran, and I paid in cash, so they didn't even get my boy name on my credit card. Um, and it was it was absolutely a wonderful experience. I had no idea that I was going to spend three hours in the salon. I didn't know that I could spend three hours in a salon and not want to kill somebody. But actually, Lori and um, Maria at Bee's Hair Salon in Palatine were absolutely fantastic, um, and they really took care of me. Uh, Lori did my nails. Maria did my hair, uh, which so now I have um, I have some bangs. Uh, that I didn't have before, um, and they, she trimmed off a lot of the dead fried ends that were there. Um, so I think it looks great, and now it's air drying, and it's much curlier and wavier than it was before. Uh, so I've only had like it's only my second long haircut, um, so it's still I'm still trying to learn what my hair is going to do when I cut it any particular length. Uh, but I like it; it's growing on me. Um, and uh, so, I mean, they were absolutely fantastic. And then um, my girlfriend and I went down to St. Louis Friday, uh, Friday evening, and uh, had dinner with friends. And so the group of people that know me in St. Louis only know me as Bryn. Um, I mean, they know my background and they know, you know, I'm not hidden anything, but they've only ever interacted with me as Bryn. Um, and I quite like that, actually. Uh, it's neat that there's people who have only ever seen Paul, people who have only seen Bran, some people, you know, get both. Um, but, uh, so I have a group of friends down there that really only know Bran. I also have an aunt who lives in St. Louis. 
and uh, I don't get to see her very often because she is, you know, a state away. Um, and um, I, I really like her. I mean, we really get along. So I didn't feel like I could come to St. Louis and not visit her, but at the same time, I didn't have to. I didn't want to worry about um, having to hide all the girl stuff and put it back on later and everything else. And so. I decided to just sort of step out on a limb and invite her out to dinner with the understanding that she was going to meet Bryn. And I asked her to use Bryn in public and um, female pronouns, uh, which she did a fantastic job with. Um, I also really wanted her to meet my girlfriend because I love both of them very much and I like when people I love are together and like each other. Um, and I got to meet uh, my aunt's boyfriend who I hadn't met before, so that was probably a very interesting experience for him. Um, but we went out to dinner, had a really lovely time, had a um, waitress who didn't want us to have such a good time. Uh, she, for whatever reason, couldn't get an order right and couldn't put an order in, and um, poor girlfriend got, not only did she not get the salad she asked for, when she finally did get it, um, she got some crazy Mexican taco sauce as a ranch as a dressing instead of being asked if she wanted anything for a dressing, um, <clears throat> and uh, she was very frantic and um, didn't quite seem to know her own job. Um, she, uh, my aunt's boyfriend, asked if they had a hot fudge shake. Now they have or hot fudge malt. They have malt shakes. They have hot fudge for Sundays and things. So it's really not a difficult thing to get the hot fudge into the malt shake, um, but uh, so he asked, do you have hot fudge malts? And she said, uh, no, we only have, wait, what was the question? And the answer is still is apparently you can't take hot fudge from over here for the Sundays and put them in the malts for over here. Um, so he didn't get to have his hot fudge malt, but um, we had a really, really lovely dinner. And I talked to her afterwards, after I got home last night, and um, asked her if it was like she expected. Um, and she said, no, it was actually really comfortable and natural. Um, which of course tells me that she expected it to be uncomfortable and awkward and weird, um, which I think is everyone's expectation. A uh, part of the reason I'm doing these videos is because people who I know who have only seen Paul now have an opportunity to see Bryn, you know, see me as Bryn and how I interact and how I, how I move and work in the, in world, the world, I guess, um, without having to necessarily be in the same room. And some people get to get it out. Anyway, um, she's my first family member who I actually have, um, been out in public as a woman with. Um, my brother and sister-in-law have been to me, been with me at parties and things where, um, but it's always at somebody's house. It's kind of a safe space. We're not really out in public too much. Um, so this was really a big milestone for me to be out with a family member, especially one who's known me since I was you know, this big, um, and have them sort of experience the life that I live. And she she thanked me for bringing her into my life uh, in that way. And um, uh, she said that she was really, you know, she was surprised at how natural and easy it was. And I asked her if she thought it was, it would be weird. And she said she did, and she wasn't sure um, if she was going to mess up the pronouns. She was nervous about that. She did fantastic. Um, but I suspect also she thought everyone was going to stare and everyone was going to know. Um, and so that brings me to the passing thing. So. I suspect that the girls at Bee's Home Care, or at Bee's Hair Care, Bee's Hair Design in Palatine, Bee's Hair Design, I suspect that the gals at Bee's Hair Design also knew, also had a pretty good idea. Um, I mean, for crying out loud, she saw my big feet. Um, but the entire time I was there, it was Miss, it was Bryn, it was her and she, and um, they treated me like any other girl in the salon. So I was telling the story on bg.n or by gender.net, and um, you know said that uh, I suspect that they clocked me, but if they clock me and still treat me like a woman, then is it really clocking? And that this has come up in discussion before, um, and you know the same point got made. 
basically, if it doesn't really matter if they twig to the fact that you're trans, as long as they're giving you the expect the um, respect that you deserve as a person, and uh, and, and presenting as the gender that, that you are, um, I think trans people, myself included, for a really long time, um, and the people around them in their lives get really nervous that um, they're not passing, they're not. Um, they're standing out, and everybody knows, and it's going to be a problem, and you know they're they're just going to feel like um, there's a um, there's a spotlight on them, and this goes back to the spotlight effect that I've talked about before. Um, the fact is, most of the time you're invisible to anyone who's not interacting with you directly. If you're interacting with somebody directly, it doesn't really matter if they don't know that you are biologically or um, I'm sorry. Uh, it doesn't matter if they don't know that your body um, did not match at birth what uh, you identify as, as inside. You know, it it doesn't matter if they twig to the fact that you're trans, as long as they are treating you a like a human, b like a person that you're presenting. So, um, you know, it's just another source of confidence. When I realized that um, a year ago or so, it really made me feel much much better about being out in public. Um, because, you know what, I'm not stealth. I'm not completely unobvious, and um, you know, if you pay any attention to me for more than a half a conversation, you're gonna realize that I'm, you know, I'm trans. Um, you know, if I'm presenting as a girl. Um, now, that doesn't mean that I don't get read as female often. A lot of times when I'm not intending to, um, but that doesn't, you know. But it doesn't always, um, uh, you know, hold that that um, they they see me as female the entire conversation. Uh, but it doesn't really matter what they think, what they see, what the what they suspect, as long as they say, Miss Bryn, she, her, um, or on the other side of the spectrum, him, sir, Mister, he. His, that's the other one I'm looking for. Um, and, you know, that's a little harder if you have non-traditional pronouns that you want people to use, because that you have to make a conversation point. Um, not a lot of trans people want to be out as trans, so that conversation gets a little weird, uh, or difficult to have sometimes. Um, but I think that's the I think that's the choice you're making when you choose uh, non-traditional pronouns. And, and I, I'm not trying to discourage the use of them. I think they're really an awesome idea uh, if that's... Um, something that makes you feel validated and, and happy with who you are. Um, I just think it you know, puts you in the position of having to have a conversation every time. Um, so, you know, I, I, I suspect that my aunt was really surprised that um, the waitress didn't, you know, seem to... Uh, <laughs> the waitress's problem had nothing to do with my, my trans identity. It had much more to do with her absent-mindedness, perhaps newness at the job. Um, she really did try hard, I think. But anyway, um, I shouldn't rag on waitresses. Um, you know, I, I think that, that she was probably surprised that, you know, I wasn't a spectacle and I didn't stand out and, um, you know, nobody cared. Uh, this is going to go a little longer than 15 minutes, probably, because YouTube unwisely decided that I'm allowed to upload videos longer than 15 minutes. I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, I really wanted to bring home you know, that piece of information because there are people who are concerned about passing, and they put so much focus on, on whether or not they pass that they're not really enjoying their life, um, and they're not just enjoying the moments that they have where they're interacting with the world. They don't appreciate... The, the fact that somebody is giving them the respect of choosing sometimes to use the pronoun that you're presenting with um, as a conscious choice instead of, you know, an automatic choice. And, you know, we sure would like it to be an automatic choice most of the time where, you know, someone doesn't have to think about it and doesn't have to consciously choose to say ma'am or her. Um, but I think if they are choosing, that's... That's a point of respect. Whereas if it's an automatic thing, it's not. Um, it's it's not really respect. That um, it's not active respect. It's it's a sort of um, 
you know, passive acknowledgement that, that uh, anyone would receive, which of course we would just want to be, you know, what anyone would receive. But, you know, I think there's there's something to the idea that, that somebody choosing to, um, I don't know, somebody choosing to act correctly is a good thing, basically. You know, we don't want to give out cookies every time a cis person does exactly what they're supposed to do, but it is a good thing when they do it. Um, so, you know, enjoy the moments that you're out, enjoy the time that you're out, and don't be so focused on passing as long as you're getting the respect you deserve. I don't ask to be invisible, I just ask to be respected. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been pretty lucky so far. Oh, I have to tell you one thing. So, at the um, at Naughty Gras, which is an art festival, uh, or an art display, um, there's all these photo uh, photographs and paintings and things around. And, and some guy actually came up to me and, and gave me the, are you a model line? And said, oh, I could have sworn I saw you over there in that... No, it was not me. Um, so I just grabbed my girlfriend's hand uh, a little tighter and made sure that he understood it. I was not the model. Um, but uh, I, I think that's, um, that's some kind of milestone to get a crappy line thrown at me. So I get to pin that badge on my um, trans girl scout sash. That should be a shirt. All right, anyway, um, send me a note. I also have um, a Formspring now, formspring.com slash brinconvenient. So send me a note. Uh, there's a link in my channel, um, which has like 170 subscribers now. It's totally awesome. Um, anyway, uh, email me on YouTube, brin at bygender.net. Join us at bygender.net. Please come. Um, and I need to settle down and have less coffee before bed. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.